uh, the, looking at the volume of a solid of a revolution. So if you have, haven't had a look at example one, it kind of takes you through uh, the theory and shows you a few nice pictures. So have a look at example one first. I'm assuming you've already done example one. So what we're doing here is looking at a function which we're given as y equals a half x squared plus one. And that's this curve that we've got demonstrated here. And we've got just a section of that, uh, the area under the curve from x equals one to x equals three. And if we were to rotate that around the x-axis, we would end up with uh, a shape which looks something like that, a three-dimensional uh, solid. And we can find the volume of it using this formula that we introduced. And it's connected with the fact that we're dealing with uh, an infinite number of circles, um, each of which has a particular radius. And the radius of that is actually the y-coordinate distance from the y-coordinate from to the x-axis. So our volume is the integral, that's the sum of all the little circles, which is pi r squared. Because r is really just the y-coordinate, we, we say it's the integral of pi y squared with respect to x, and it's to do with our bounds from 1 to 3. So in this case, it would be from 1 to 3. And substituting in the information that we've got, I tend to keep pi out as a, a, a constant term saves are getting all clogged up in the integration process. The function y is a half x squared plus 1, and we have to square that. And that's our integration problem. Uh, various ways we could do that, but maybe the easiest would just be to uh, multiply out the bracket. Um, so we square the first term, multiply the two terms together, which is a half x squared, and double it gives me 1x squared. And square the last term with respect to x. And then we can integrate the function. Remember, we've got a pi multiplier at the beginning. We integrate each term. So we've got a quarter x squared. That goes to x. Uh, oops, that should be x to the four. My apologies. I was looking at that. So it's a quarter x to the power four. Which means when we integrate that, but it becomes x to the five. We've already got the quarter there but we also divide by the new power. Uh, then we've got x to the 3 over 3, and we've got x, and our lower and upper bounds are 1 and 3. Substituting in, we've got our 2, substitute in 3, and then substitute in 1. So we've got 3 to the power 5 over 20, plus 3 to the power 3 over 3 plus 3. Subtract 1 over 20 plus 1 over 3 and plus 1. Okay. And the rest of it is just computation here. Uh, we've got 2, 4, 3 over 20 plus, that's 27 of these plus 9 plus 3. Um, and then we've got minus 1 over 20 minus a third and minus 1. And we could simplify that. We could take the 20th and say that's 242 over 20. The whole numbers add up to 11, and we've still got this minus a third uh, to deal with. You could use your calculator if you want, but where's the fun in that? Uh, so we've got uh, 242. We could make it into 60 through there, I suppose. Or, um, or we could uh, make that 6. Uh, if multiplied by 3, uh, that would become... Uh, to 726 sixtieths um, minus 20 sixtieths plus 11 which gives us 706 sixtieths plus 11 and that gives us um, 11 uh, it's, it goes into 706 goes into 60 or 60 going to 760, 11 times, that would be 660, plus 46 sixtieths, uh, or 23 thirtieths, plus 11, which is going to give me a volume of 22 and 23 thirtieths pi cubic units. And there's other ways you could do that, of course, but um, that's me worked through uh, the, the computation of all that. The bottom line is that's the volume of our solid using this particular formula. Okay, so I hope that makes a wee bit of sense and you can go and practice it.